Shall we go live? Um, There's lots of yes, people. we are live. Give a minute, and people are entering. People are entering the room. Om Shanti. So welcome all of you to the fourth anniversary of the Values Workshop series. And as always, before we begin, we'll spend a moment in silence and invoke the presence of the Supreme Being. So, welcome all of you to the fourth anniversary <laughs> celebration. The fourth anniversary celebration. It's indeed, a pleasure Madhubhan. to have our uh, dear senior Ayogi sisters. Two of them are joining from Madhuban, our campuses. We call them Madhuban and Gyan Sarovar in India, Mount Abu. Sister Sharon and Sister Shireen, both of you. Your names are very Sharon and Shireen. I'll come to the poem in that. <laughs> and also we have Sister Tanya who's joining all the way from Montreal. So thank you so much for joining. Tanya, Sister Mantha, Montreal. Have, uh, it's a unique thing today. We have a few participants as well of ours. Sister Pooja is there, Sister Rena, Senem and Michael Bhai. And all the other participants, welcome all of you. Actually, welcome, welcome. speakers don't need introduction, but it's my duty to tell you all, tell you all a bit about them, as always. So let's start with Sister Sharona. Sister Sharona. A senior Rajogi, a spiritual trainer with a lot of passion for self-development. And as we speak, she's the director of the Brahma Kumaris in Israel and also of Boston. It's very sorry she started her journey of this. She travels extensively as a Brahma Kumari's resource person and is also a motivation. She has edited and authored books and articles on spiritual empowerment, social development, and healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle is both the people and technique of Vishal Pekla. Another sister, sister She is also an experienced Rajyogi practicing for nearly 30 years. And she is the author of four unique books. To name a few, Soul Fitness, Oh My Goodness, True uh, Hollywood Blockbuster, and Experience the Divine. And as all of us know, she's also the creator and presenter of Release Your Wings YouTube channel. And she's also authored three popular meditation albums and a deck of spiritual power cards. So she also serves <clears throat> in the Tampa, Florida area of USA. But right now she's joining from Pandav Bhavan, our campus called Madhuban in Mount Abu. So welcome, Sister Shireen. Thank you. And our interviewer for today, Sister Tanya, who is joining all the way from Montreal. Montreal. And she basically is, she began her journey with formal dance training and she's followed by that a 20-year career in live theater, a performing arts person. And also that continues today in the form of being a certified Pilates instructor who specializes in movement re-education. And she began her journey of Raj Yoga 25 years ago. And in, in one answer, she says that to desire to better take care of herself and live with greater compassion and dignity. 25 years ago, my sister Brahma Kumari Pilates trainer. And she also says that she enjoys demystifying spirituality through courses, workshops, and retreats. And she is a regular member of the teaching faculty of the Peace Village Learning and Retreat Center in New York. 
ఫేసెస్టిక్ ప్రెజెన్స్ ఇన్ డీట్ సో డివైన్ మేక్స్ అస్ ఫీల్ దట్ దిస్ మీటింగ్ ట్రూలీ ఇస్ ద ఆల్ మై టీస్ డిజైన్ in this materialistic world where everyone just wants to dine and wine these rajyogis come with this spiritual wisdom overflowing as a mine this broken world order which is now on the decline where people from their jobs are forced to resign god tells us my dear child everything here is indeed super fine just let your attention and awareness towards me align so that you get to experience in your stage the incline which in turn makes your intellect broad wise and super refined so with this thank you so much all of you for joining and i'll pass it on to sister claudia for the official welcome over to sister claudia andarni kuda official ga welcome chestaru om shanti from vancouver uh, from very wet vancouver today <laughs> but yeah. good evening for some of you and maybe you have a better uh, weather than we have here but it is okay because we have so nice flowers with us so all those three flowers <laughs> we can have many flowers on a day like today కలిపి <laughs> మీ అందరితో జరిగాయి <laughs> so let's play the part also with reverence with reverence to that innate original pure nature and intention what it was meant for said the more you you know use your speciality your uniqueness the more you use it the more it grows safe to really feel safe you have to release this tight grip on the outcomes in the physical world but what has to be my point of reference in any situation to be able to adjust myself this point of reference of absolute love an absolute a state of benevolence first stabilize yourself in your self respect your self honor your self regard be stable in that divine and sacred space inside yourself clean my heart clear my mind so that i have a single thought of just being a lamp of hope for others
because I think lots of us who come into spirituality notice that more creativity comes up and that's quite, uh, I think, a sign of balance. The joy that comes from poems is satisfying both sides of the brain. To know that if I increase the efficiency with which I practice my spirituality and apply it in the right way, I can see change. Our regularity, what we're being regular in, is it keeping my mind flexible? Is it keeping my mind open? Is it keeping my mind available? Is it keeping my mind easy and light? If decency is, is there in you, you will not allow circumstances to compromise that decency. To work with curiosity in terms of exploration is that it feeds you back enthusiasm, you know? because there is a new energy. But the simple act of kindness, the simple act of love, the simple act of helping someone in a moment of need is a big source of inspiration. That no matter what challenges come from the outside, you should never let go of your divinity, your spirituality or your divine manners above. Flexibility um, versus uh, rigidness is the basis also to avoid, not just in the teamwork, but in, in your whole life, is the basis to avoid debating or entering a, a dispute. So means that we can be flexible with values also, with qualities inside ourselves. We don't need to be in one way only. We can adapt ourselves to different situations, different people, different circumstances. Integrity is also to be able to stand up for your own values, even when you are confronted by it. The, the ultimate aim is to be, to heal heart and intellect and bring them into one. And uh, the ultimate solution is that you go deep into meditation and connect to the divine light. Why do I want to be innovative? To what end? And how much energy am I willing to put into it? Or uh, what's the price of this innovation? I think these are some of the questions I need to ask myself. Is, is it worth my time and energy that I'm putting into it? So it's better to observe and, you know, take it in, but at the same time, not to absorb it. That is power of accommodation. The more perfect you are, the more gentle and more silent you are towards others' mistakes. And sometimes you're silent. It's not that you don't know. You know, but you also know that they're making an effort and it's okay. When I do good, I don't need people to notice it or say anything or do anything about it because my register is not in the hands of humans. My register is with God. time I had any criticizing thoughts <laughs> towards myself, I would stop and really forgive myself because I understand how much harm it uh, creates on the soul. Sympathy often is about saying or expressing, whereas empathy can be more about listening and feeling. How much inner power I have to be able to use the aspect of empathy, to be able to express sympathy without being overtaken by usually It's the transparency with wisdom and with the ability to discern. So if I respond to a mistake with a mistake, then I'm lacking that responsibility that will make me transparent. Maybe your energy needs a bit more kindness. Maybe love. Because to become a proficient spiritual person, that state of consciousness needs to gently be upgraded.
Okay, wonderful. So thank you so much, Nikhil Bhai, for reminiscing all these events and the moments which we had. I'll just stop sharing your screen so that we can see the participants here. Thank you so much. And now it's over to Sister Anu. We are doing something new and different. Over to you. <laughs> well, uh, new or different, but I think it is important that we celebrate, truly celebrate, and four years. Well, I always like, I really want to take the whole session to name everyone who is in the team. As I always mention, the team members are amazing, like uh, in, in communication to prepare the messages, to send out every <laughs> <day. laughs> so, email, so, uh, WhatsApp. background so that the participants who background low on the background low on a balanese are put the foreground to these for the month participants who attended regularly every workshop with them every week every workshop attend in 20 participants if you want to show about to know understanding experience chala deep experiences for a month but share chess so many so under the coda yeah right a participant i think we want to also listen to our speakers um their hearts about the values so uh will we have chosen just a few quanta mati participants ne chusam endukante mana speakers kuda unnaru vaalaki kuda manam vinali kabatti sanam from euro san sister sanam from europe tani yokka chapter fail avakunda prathi sister tana join avtaru alage johanna sister johanna from india uh, india nunchi pk michael is from like michael by no matter who he is from europe he is joining the prapancham he prapancham background kuda michael brother join avtaru so love for the values that has brought us uh, so he uh, while india nunchi join avutunnaru so brother ki kuda vaatham balkam so prathi week so sister ka participate avutunna 20 workshop series avutunna after the participants done but puja is very special i'm going to mention later so let's first listen to um for sanam sister sanam first and experiences share just that you pretty we could a sister sanam join on the whole um to be with you all again and again every week and pretty we could me under the time span Happy, happy fourth anniversary to everybody. I am very happy and blessed to feel out the man. No, I'm the kind of every week. I mean, values for workshops. It is for every week. Middle and end, if I may say, the day to summary, um, for the summary of the values that we have, and we had a beginning, and we have a middle too now, and um, the experience with the beginning with the always an icebreaker video, or it's a lovely poem for. For the speakers, uh, workshop, experience, experience, uh, uh, and uh, and the wonderful speakers, all the wise words. Like the speakers, the so, uh, so, 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 Achala Santoshan Yaundi. Um, hear from Rana. Oh, you are you're muted. You don't know. Okay, Om Shanti and a happy fourth anniversary from me as well. So what I uh, would like happy to happy fourth anniversary program was uh the program the which was the the program program was first time any profiting join a flyer in one of the groups and like a flyover choose and walk a group low and it was social media local flyover which in dainty bands class in the african then jane this is the class in the join you know the sessions that i have a tiny session i've been in late 
2021, if I I remember correct. Late and 2021. I was enjoying it. Then, 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 ఉన్నాయి <laughs> బ్రిజ్మోహన్ భాయ్ సాబ్ షేర్ ది అదర్ డే it is better to be competent in acquiring knowledge and imbibing them uh, rather than uh, fight or uh, be competent uh, uh, in the save in the service field because when you imbibe a lot of knowledge and uh, acquire it and share with people uh, that is the biggest service i think and according to uh, the the daily uh, murli study uh, the god has also given us the criteria for uh, for uh, for which we can say that the service has been successful and there is four things one is we are happy with ourselves okay the whatever service we are doing we we are happy with ourselves and those who we served are happy with us and the companions that we have during that service while we are happy with us everyone who is doing the criteria are fulfilled of course god will be happy with us so i would like to say that this particular project is the closest that i experienced which comes any particular know, project the bar in the definition can the closest ga na kanpinchindi payan santushtata seva sector which can the chala pati graph i was part of a similar project in a different uh, scenario where i was single handedly you know managing all those things the back end activities the handling and a lot of things uh, initially and later on a lot of people uh, joined but of course it was a great learning experience and i'm thankful for every opportunity that i got but as i told you uh, this a particular uh, project you know it is particular the project kala closes described by baba and the murli and uh, thank you thank you uh, rena sister that's very really kind kind words summarizing uh, your experience thank you i uh, will also briefly hear from uh, brother michael and puja i hope our our speakers are not minding and it's a pleasure to hear you but briefly quickly yes sister uh, brother michael jan sarova and uh, just before i was in the session with genti ben with sharona on the first floor so it's nice to see sharona just now and all of you and sharona yes, congratulations for this value, you know, for me, you know, spiritual life is to follow the value to implement the value in life it makes you soul conscious when you are soul conscious you can have connection with god easily you say my baba and god say yes child and is there so congratulation congratulation to all everyone to uh, really to have that possibility uh, to go in the easy way smooth way because it's uh, also i want to really congratulate you for the professionalisms for the family feeling you integrate everyone it give love the art is really engaged you know when i'm participating because i'm so happy uh, to feel being integrating with all of you so om shanti om shanti om shanti congratulations congratulations om shanti thank you thank you brother michael michael so congratulations to you and each of us thank you and as it puja puja is very integral part of values for life series that uh, once the exercises are decided planned it comes to life so that beautiful beautiful presentations and images so also prepares the summary of every talk that we attend it's so beautifully uh, included every part but beautiful image so the beautiful powerpoint presentations it never you don't know who prepares it but you enjoy in every workshop that's pujas 
Thank you, Pooja. You would like to say a few words. Thank you so much, Sister Anu, for those kind words. It's been my honor and a pleasure to be a part of this since four years. Um, oh, I yes, thoroughly enjoyed the presentations. Oh, and, uh, the the present uh, it's lovely to listen to all the esteemed speakers and esteemed speakers and the synopsis of the summaries of the talks. It's been a lot. It has made me a better person in the past. And uh, that is why I consider myself to be extremely fortunate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, all of you, for making it very special for with your words. Now, I think we, we will hand it over to Sister Tanya to take it over. <laughs> Thank you, and I also want to offer my congratulations. Um, it's really extraordinary to be able to continue to sustain something for four years. It's not a small thing, and what I feel is this is much more than a series. It's a movement, and that it's allowing many to um, progress, to um, spirituality much more present in their lives through this value-based education. And of course, the thing about education is that it increases the value of the one who's studying it. So it's really not just about learning about values, but actually increasing the value of the self. And I think that will be uh, probably one of the things we'll be exploring and looking at today. And very excited to have our two sisters, Sharona and Shireen. And I'll maybe just share a little secret. My, this is actually Tanya's my second name. My first name is Sharon. <laughs> so. Uh, I feel like a connection and complicity with you. So three sh sisters. <laughs> and so I'd like to start this exploration by, um, perhaps, you know, we've heard so many values covered and perhaps even more than once. I don't even know if there's that many values, but so many values have been covered over these past four years. And um, maybe is there a key value and I like the word key because it suggests that it's unlocking and it's giving access to, but there, is there a key value that allows you to, that you would have to focus on? Because there's so many, but is there one that, one that perhaps that you could uh, tell us about that for you, uh, you find very important, very essential, that allows you to unlock many other things and that also um, helps to support your spiritual practice, your spiritual journey, because I think definitely expressing values is what makes spirituality accessible to people. Spirituality we want to take us deeper into spirituality because I think that is a very important element, is how can we increase this aspect of spirituality in our lives through the expression of values. So again, the, the question is, is there a key value for you that perhaps unlocks or allows you access to that deeper spirituality? And we can start, Shreen, you've got your mic open. So why don't we start with you? This is Shereen. Hello. Greetings from Pandavavan. And as you would have it, when you come to Madhavan, you get a fruit and that is a cold. <laughs> and so uh, it's never, it's always there. It's an ever-present fruit that everyone gets a cleansing. Um, I love that question, actually, and I've been thinking about it. What Oracidus says is that the will to survive is the most prevalent thing about someone. But what new psychology says is positive psychology. They say is that to the wanting to keep everything familiar is the most important thing that people uh, to do. Do familiar and want to keep everything familiar. That is familiar. They want to keep everything familiar. So I feel any value. The first thing we have to do is familiarity. Familiarity. that I feel fearlessness. 
fearlessness is a very very fearlessness chaala mukhyamu nirbhayata cornerstone of all values anni anni values ki countering the fear of change yeah yes countering the fear of change countering the fear of wanting to give everything you know change ni ma swikarinchaka kadi change cheste bhai padukokodadu idi chaala mukhyamani nenu anukuntunanu sister sharuna mi abhiprayam enti thank you everyone i also appreciate you and congratulations I appreciate your question Tanya and it's interesting what you were saying Shireen because um I can relate to fearlessness but uh the entry point for me is honesty so anit karna mukhyamaina point de entante jayati fearlessness to be fearlessness na kuda chala important isti na kunna point de entante honesty to god is very good if you if you honesty towards god bhagavantan ka భగవంతునితో ఒక రిలేషన్షిప్ కానీ ఉన్నట్లయితే భగవంతుడు మీ జీవితంలో ఉండాలి అనుకుంటే లేదంటే ఆనెస్టీ ఆనెస్టీ మీ యొక్క హైయెస్ట్ సెల్ఫ్ తో ఆనెస్టీ బుద్ధి ఏం అర్థం చేస్తుంది ఏంటి రైట్ ఏం రాంగ్ అనే బుద్ధికి తెలుస్తుంది కానీ మైండ్ మనసు ఏదైతే ఉందో దాన్ని పట్టించుకోదు దాని వల్ల అనేక రకాల డైరెక్షన్ తీసుకొని వెళ్తుంది డిసానెస్ట్ గా ఉంచేందుకు today sister jayanti in the early review she was giving a definition to what makes us effort makers and in fact double effort makers are the same as double double purusha dilte em chestaru ani val jayanti behin chepparu she was saying one thing is your outside, your outside your routines your diet your whatever definitely bite bite eve taachar vyavaharal paakistam ani tappu doing it out of um, a need to have an image a certain image projected of who you are mere man chestunnara mere manna ok image kosam me chestunnara your spiritual kani me leda me spiritual pin penchukune enduku chestunnara i think we're having a little buffering issue so it's not for video and the uh, yeah i'm sorry i'm being looked at that to see if if you can hear us sharona if you can close your video for a moment that might help in terms of the uh oh <laughs> well we'll invoke her <laughs> yes we'll invoke her back we'll invoke her to come back from the magic land uh when we can sort of uh trampoline off of that, what where i felt that was perhaps taking us is in a way we look at spirituality and the values expression of values as moving us towards truth towards our truth and uh the qualities that both of you share definitely are connected to that and in a way um to not be able to express values to not be able to connect to that spirituality is what's blocking us from that truth and as so the fear of change the fear of not keeping things as they are like i'm just wanting to keep things the same dharana chestamu anta kuda em ane point ki mari into a place of truth that we're going to experience ultimately um which is perhaps you know why do we want to express these values in our life why do we want to connect to our spirituality is we want spirituality to have that deep peace we want to be in our lives we want to feel our lives have a sense of value and purpose and so um some kind of work that um pretty how can i you know deal with this fear and perhaps and, and sure i was talking about it let's see okay Uh, is boys that you if you ever feel a sense of and it can be subtle 
that fear that is, that is somehow becoming a, an obstacle to reconnect right you know i want to share a couple of things One, let's let me very briefly share um all of you heard of the uh, book pride and prejudice by jane austen all of Austin books have a lot of gyan in them. They're very, very values-based. So in one of the books, um, uh, Pride and Prejudice, uh, Lizzie and Jane are sisters, and Jane is getting married, and Lizzie goes to Jane. I, uh, and Jane says, oh, I wish you as much happiness as I have, because she's very happy she's getting married. And uh, Lizzie says, I have your happiness if I have your goodness. All of the values, they are not in it and itself, itself uh, valuable. They are valuable because they bring happiness and goodness and love and, and peace. Happiness and all of those things happiness. into our lives. And so uh, I, I remember always that line, right? If I have your goodness, I will have your happiness. And so if I have your values, I will have your happiness. So if someone has a lot of values, like let's say any of our dadis, I have their values, then I will have their happiness. You know, it's not something I can grab. Like I can't grab a position, I think I'll have happiness because of it. I have to really have so that's one thing I wanted to share. And the other thing is about fear, right? There's a very much cliche that goes around saying fear is false evidence appear mm -hmm. real. Fear um, and the false and evidence even though it's a cliche, I feel it's really important. Important to my understanding is in the face of um, our lessons. Um, the Supreme talks about paper tigers and, you know, Bhagavan real Guru, tigers, right? yeah, paper tigers yeah, for even uh, values, right? The fact that I don't want to uh, paper value, I don't plant. want to change anything familiar in, is in, in, like a paper tiger. I have to face it ahead, ahead of on. I have to go for clothes and then I realize, no, it's, uh, uh, it, I think it's a real tiger. And then I go close and I realize it's just a paper tiger. And so I feel that it's so important to do it to, because values actually can be acquired, right? We are not always blessed with the best or blessed with the, with the world that we're in. Uh, we're not always blessed with these things. And so in the right circumstances, all of that. But in this time and age, right now, right? right now, the most amazing thing about this time is no other time in history has there been a reason why I don't need to change and just have a bunch of distractions, right? I could just scroll through all of social media shorts and not do anything. But Sorry, I'll just I'll just invite you to slow down a little bit. I'm thinking of the translator. Oh, okay. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'll slow down. Thank um, you. And um, and okay. So right now is the time where distractions are max, right? Like you don't need to do anything. You can just get into your comfort zone. You can sit and scroll through whatever you're scrolling through. I feel God's presence is important, but if you don't believe in God, whatever your higher power is, higher good is, <laughs> to really transformation because now uh, is the time to do that. Whatever higher consciousness you may believe is Yes, and absolutely. I think the time is is supporting everyone, realizing that you know the distractions can only take you so far. And then you're still stuck with, well, where am I? What have I got going on internally? Outside cannot help me. And I think this is a big issue of, you know, even what we're taking support from, if we're taking it from distractions, it's almost like the margin, it's getting less and less in terms of how much that's ever going to really um, be able to distract me from facing the things, facing the fear, facing the uncertainty, you know, and this is a, a point that I definitely will look at in a moment.
Money, you know, there's this aspect of, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to say about empty calories, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's yeah. say I go and have a, like a whole bunch of cakes and stuff, and that's all it, I keep eating. I, Every once I, in a while, I eat a cake, no problem. If that's all I eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, at eventually it will show on the body, right? It breaking down. And body breaks the same the way I feel with these distractions. Every once in a while, you are indulging in distractions, no problem. But if it just becomes a routine, a window of opportunity for self transformation keeps closing. Distractions in each It is, and it is a window that is getting smaller and smaller. Um, in terms of that transformation, definitely values is a wonderful way to an entry point because sometimes spirituality can be a bit of a shut off. There's people I know that I can't just start to have talk about spirituality with them. But when right. I start talking about the, the values that they're expressing and the things that they're doing in their lives and it's really encouraging that it's very supportive, especially when they're facing challenges. Um, I know that beyond that, you know, even in expressing values, there can be obstacles. In a moment, we're going to explore some of those things that can come outside in terms of just the places that both you and Sharon are serving. Um, but spirituality and a spiritual consciousness, especially specifically, and of course, then the connection that that enables to a higher power has, is also becoming increasingly necessary as people even find it more and more challenging to express those values based on the prevailing circumstances. And so I was thinking about this aspect of, you know, there's values and the expression of those values. And then there's, you could say, for lack of a better word, pure values that require a shift at a very deep level of that quality of consciousness. And I would love to hear kind of your thoughts on how can you perhaps inspire or create a bridge to someone to um, want to reflect kind of the idea of the mind doesn't care. You know, your mind might be completely opposing you <laughs> expressing values because of what's going on. But yourself, your truth is actually very hungry, you know, that, that pure essence of yourself. And how can that sort of be um, to the fore so that you're starting to express from within rather than, you know, if I'm in a great, if the weather's good, I can be really kind. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Could you maybe speak to that if that's clear? Yes, I, I you know, actually. Just, it, oh, sorry. is Sharona back? Uh, yeah, maybe I will add her, but I have a request, very sincere request that slow down. The translators are requesting again and again. Okay, that, sure, thank you. Sure. Sorry, sorry. I, no, we, no I will. Thank you. you know, I am surprised we have had back to back uh, hurricanes, two very bad hurricanes recently. And um, so one was Helene, and Helene hit, and I was shocked. By, you know, like going through these residential subdivisions and house after house after house after house. Everyone's belongings are outside. Right? Their homes flooded and they had to throw out everything. And then two weeks later, uh, Milton hits and everyone gets flooded again, including. And so um, the shocking thing is how, maybe not shocking, surprising. The surprising, surprising thing is how surprising we came together and helped each other. Everyone was taking care of each other. Everyone was taking care of each other. So maybe that in extreme situations are innate values, right? Like these are innate core qualities that they come out because something you said in the beginning of the session and even now about truth. I feel eternal truth and spirituality are synonyms. 
eternal truth and so spirit anything that is spiritual property is true the character is spiritual is truth and eternal truth so is truthful ga ite undu spiritual is spiritual ga undu truth is spiritual right or me using this laptop is spiritual is because laptop the laptop has a life span laptop ke life span but why do i say that when i am inculcating certain values that that, that values is spiritual is because spiritual and religious the same and spiritual and these values are spiritual values and it went away i don't ever think they are eternal maybe eternal i think it have a book the best way to get to any value is like to cut out all of the fluff and everything right is to just become aware of ourselves as eternal souls and when i become aware of my soul my soul will emerge will emerge atmalo evet evet innete ga unnayo anipistai start coming up you know just evet like atma lokal untayo ati daitos stay even you said that you could one give you a manual and said okay this is how the pillal put in tarvata automatic the parents tells potundi talli ga in tarvata talli talli call chaala policy sutte appudu kuda how to be other than 20 matter kadu alla eppudaithe atma atma untamo you know automatic so on the 20 qualities and kuda fights vachestayi I guess that is kind of what I was uh, thinking about as well. And, you know, within that, um, what I'm hearing again and again, and not, and this is also from those who are practicing Raj Yoga, but the challenges of that consciousness, of stabilizing, of getting into that consciousness, especially when faced with uh, adversity, especially in challenging circumstances, sometimes it can kind of springboard us into you know i've definitely experienced where i'm faced with a, you know a big test or a serious situation and it somehow works as a trigger to but because of also the practice i've had and i think yeah. how can we make that accessible uh, a practice of if you will being able to enter into that spiritual consciousness i know this is what we teach it's the basis of what we teach but sometimes i feel it's still a struggle there's still something perhaps a a way that we're approaching that um and i i think the fact that if people are interested in values and you know it's almost like well how interested i i like to sort of stood out for me and i I think it was this idea of what are you willing to give up what are you in one of the sharings in the video this uh, how much are you willing to to give to invest I think it was Aruna Ben that was talking to invest so that you can actually enter into that consciousness that will allow you to express that innate those innate qualities I guess maybe the experience and maybe we'll invite you at some point to perhaps take us into an experience or even now. What's your favorite sport? My favorite sport. Mhm. It's almost right. like Okay, that's never a mind your favorite ask Manoj bhai. Manoj bhai, what's your yeah. favorite? Sport? That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was just on the line with Sister Sharona because I'm taking her on a WhatsApp call. Oh, okay. So she has some problem with her system. Mm. She's just shutting it down. I'm just taking her off. Sorry, I didn't hear you. You were asking me some value. Uh, so, what's so, your sister, favorite sport? Huh? My favorite sport. Uh-huh. <laughs> Do we watch sports anymore? <laughs> I'm sure sports are better watch sports what's your favorite sport manoj bhai I'm not a very sports person <laughs> so okay I'll just come back to this conversation later I'll just take sister sharona are you able to hear us one answer okay let's take cricket right everyone in india yeah, loves cricket. cricket I was going to say right? cricket let's so cricket. there we go let's take cricket can everyone print. in india loves cricket right I'm just speak about india the cricket uh, I don't know really anything about cricket too much I know there are a few players like uh, whoever whoever I can't even recall Batsman. them Batsman <laughs> batsman some batsman right don't doni let doni 
right? So Dhoni is an amazing batsman and um, a famous uh, street in India, including Mount Abu, people are playing cricket. Right? Cricket is it a different game they are playing? No, they're playing the same game. Cricket cricket the street corner in India is playing the same game. And the cricket 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 are playing the same game. Uh, different okay. tools, different things. They're playing the cricket same cricket. game with the same bat, the same ball. Right? What makes Dhoni Dhoni and what makes someone on the street corner um, just a amateur cricketer, right? Um, the Dhoni, I don't know if he has a particular style of hitting the bat or whatever, would have practiced that style of hitting the bat a million times. Again and again and again and again a million times, right? And that is true for soul consciousness. It's not special knowledge that you need you just need to practice the basics again and again and again and again right? people don't have like she didn't have special knowledge she just practiced again and again and again and again and that's what we have to do right i find the most dangerous words in the english language is i already know because knowing that you already know, then you um, are pretty much in effect saying, I don't need to practice this. What new can I learn? What new can I learn? Right? That is amateurs. You want to be a professional values person? You have to pick your values and practice or pick soul consciousness. Practice, practice, soul consciousness practice, practice, and practice again and again and again and again. I couldn't agree that, with you more. <laughs> that's, that's what makes the difference. Uh, Thank you, because it's, it's such an important point. And Within that, to ensure that my practice is very accurate, you know, we've been given very specific aspects, points of knowledge, and to ensure those, ensure that those are what I'm using. And you know, I underline this aspect of soul consciousness or spiritual consciousness because it's kind of what will provide a foundation for a very consistent expression of values not a conditional temporary or but it, it provides it empowers me to be consistent in that expression and i think one of the things we learn about values we like values we enjoy it when we express them but then we see where we're challenged you know where we're finding that we're not able to express those values within certain circumstances. And why is that? How can we improve our success rate, if you will? And I feel that the key is this spiritual consciousness um, that our supports aren't coming from temporary, uh, fluctuating um, environmental aspects, but coming, or even an individual, but coming from my own spirituality and connection to, to a, a source that supports that spirituality. So I, I appreciate that you underline that there isn't any special, <laughs> as you say, knowledge. Or um, sometimes we think, well, they've been doing this for so many years. You know, it's not even, it's that I give so much attention to the basic practice is one thing. And the second is that uh, there's never a point, as you shared, where I feel I've done that. I no longer need to put my awareness there. Coming from a dance background, from your first class where you're basically running around the room in a tutu maybe to being, you know, the prima ballerina of a world-class dance company, your warm up, the movement that you do, the first thing that you're going to do is called plies. You're both doing it. And a really top class dancer, um, you know, there was a, a video at one point of a top class, world-class ballet dancer, who with her coach in this hour long video spent doing one of the most basic ballet movements for an hour 
And well, for most of that video, the coach that had to keep stopping and saying, no, no, that's wrong. No, <laughs> this is a it prima is ballerina. And so the idea, first she had the humility to present that, but to present the idea that if you really want to excel, you need to put in the time and you never need to, there's no embarrassment. There's no, if you need to ask no, questions, but also the love, you know, they love doing that drilling. Do you, much do you love these practices? Uh, the expression of values. I think there's just this deep love that we want that to be part of our life and part of our expression. So the role of love. I'd like to go back to, okay. uh, yeah, go ahead, please. And then we'll I, carry on. I wanted to talk about, just double click on what you were saying about the coach. Uh, prima ballerina, right? She's not saying, I know everything, I don't need a coach, right? Every professional athlete, every professional dancer, every professional whatever, right? If you want to go to the Olympics, does, do you see anyone in the Olympics without a coach? No, everyone has. At least coach. one. At least one. <laughs> <laughs> At least one, right? But the so, game look at the coach is really important too. We all need a coach. And um, for us in Rajoga, it is the supreme that we think of ourselves as a coach. Rajoga, you mean you don't subscribe to coach. Pick a coach. Pick someone you really look up to. Okay, okay. Very important point. So I actually like to go back to this aspect of being, you know, you have firsthand experience of being in a situation, very, um, a lot of upheaval. I mean, basically living in Florida is not a matter of if, but when. <laughs> now it just seems like it's not even once a year. You before, it was, you know, maybe every few years. Then every year. Now it's several times, it seems, a year. There's, there's some kind of tropical storm hitting. And, you know, I was thinking back to you shared that within this particular experience, it seemed to generate a lot of uh, support, you know, helping out each other. I do remember when Katrina hit that there was perhaps not that happening. And, um, Sorry? I remember when Katrina hit and how they uh, they really struggled, yes. Yeah, really struggled just with the physical, you know, the aftermath of that. But also it seemed to generate a lot of um, just self absorption just more caring about yourself than necessarily. I mean, not everyone, but that seemed to be an, an issue that was highlighted. And I, I also remember just another circumstance. Um, uh, the sister who lives in Calgary, many of you know her, Sister Jane. And they, a place that's near the mountains that, you know, it's not even near an ocean or anything. And you would never in a million years think the disaster that would hit there was a flood. I mean, I could never imagine that. And to see landmarks that I grew up with, underwater, bridges, etc. underwater was extraordinary. And that too generated an outpouring of support and help amongst the community, amongst each other. But then there was another side, and you know, this is where the, the conditional element, and how can we, first of all, for ourselves, make sure that we're not conditional in terms of our expression of values, but also how can we support and inspire others to go beyond some of the things? And one of them was... Um, and there were some perhaps not so charitable thoughts towards those who were deemed having a lot. Because a lot of the homes that were near the river where there was flooding were the wealthy Calgarians, very, very wealthy Calgarians. 
who lost everything. And sometimes there was the thought, well, you know, you know, it's not <laughs> such a big deal. <laughs> not as much um, <laughs> compassion. <laughs> And, you know, it's, I guess these things in terms of, um, you know, maybe this leads us back to why spirituality becomes more and more essential because of the kind of equalizing and harmonizing aspect of that consciousness. But in terms of, I don't know if that was something that you were confronted with in terms of, on one hand, perhaps the support, but on the other hand, seeing individuals that were struggling perhaps to be more compassionate and helpful. And, and what do you do in that circumstance? There are always people who, um, there's always so many people who are And not, seeing that, you know, not just yeah. perhaps being one of those people, but if I see <laughs> that, <laughs> that, <laughs> and I, you know, not become <laughs> judgmental, Judgment yeah, and that's yeah, there's only one answer to that is to really become a detached observer. Detached observer like don't judge. You know, like I'm seeing this person not being the best version of themselves. So I shouldn't be judging them. Right. But surprisingly, as time went on, Katrina was about 18 years ago, I think. Um, surprisingly, as time is going on, time passes, yeah, 18 years ago. Surprisingly, what I'm noticing is not just in Florida, right? even in North Carolina, where they weren't expecting the floods and whole towns got wiped out, whole towns got wiped out. Um, so many people, like they are citizens, you know, before they used to be Red Cross and all of these things. Red Cross, um, but now they're citizens of non-profits. Non people who non made some money and decided they were going to open a non-profit, right? Citizen non-profits. Um, non helping. So many, so many places. And I feel like, like I was saying, right, the world has moved on. Um, wherever it was when Katrina hit to now, where a large number of people are waking up. There are pockets who are not waking up. That's true. So they have ridiculous ideas or whatever, want to kill female people or whatever. But the thing. Hello, Sharona. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um. But for me to just be neutral, I don't need to get involved in their vibrations. I just need to be neutral. So just to catch you up to speed, Sharona, we've been exploring in terms of values and spirituality as a basis for empowering our expression of values and what to do in the face of, you know, perhaps seeing where adversity which can sometimes really bring out the best in people, but also sometimes not. How can we face that and not be brought down by it? So Shireen Ben was, was responding to that. But perhaps another question connected to it is in the face of adversity. How can the expression of values become a source of empowerment and even protection? empowerment to protection so this focus you know we're here this is a, a series to empower the expression of values and support spiritual growth and how can that why is that becoming so important not just to make life better but even to serve as and how does it serve as a source perhaps can it serve as a source of empowerment and protection would you like to speak to that? Can you unmute? Oh, she can't unmute herself. Can someone help her? <laughs> yeah, now she's co-host and you can. There you go. <laughs> well, first of all, apologies for all this technological uh, distraction. Technological and distraction. For so all. And I'm very, very sorry that I missed what Shireen was saying. I know you uh, as a speaker. Shireen's a speaker. And, uh, Oh, oh my goodness, I think so. Yeah, book was 
Does it? Um, people still believe that um, retorting and um, tit for tat, um, reacting, seems to move things forward more than. First of all, um, in these times, we're seeing extremes of violence and extreme violence a ruling force. And yet, whenever the pendulum swings to an extreme, I just wanted to add one thing is that uh, I love what you're sharing that we should prove to ourselves that anger doesn't really accomplish much but also that we have to trust that our values are going to help us. There has to be that deep trust. That's right. That's right. And um, I would say that that's different from faith. My values with trust, I'm experimenting. Here's the perfect. Um, I've understood all about the law of karma. I've understood karma philosophy that um, every drop of goodness right now is contributing to a a a, a shift that's that's happening in a plan much larger than what any one human hand could hold. Night is not going to be. Night. 
today. Winter is now going to be moving into spring on the spiritual level. Who's going to bring raises their hand in front of God and says, I would like to contribute to that of goodness, which will create that warmth of a better tomorrow and that light as opposed to the darkness. So we can understand that even one person is important in this because you don't need seven and a half billion people doing this work. You just need a seven and a half. That's always a small number. I can understand it. And yet the programs and conditionings and emotional habits Again and again, my effort to goodness, go for a value or a virtue. Between faith and trust, because I absolutely have faith that this is, has to be accumulated now for there to be this kind of larger plan shift. But trust means in the moment. In my everyday life, I keep, you know, for that higher vibration, either from within or from above. The higher vibration to Manam that new thing. That's the trust. This is what's needed, not just for the relationship, not just for. The situation about a, an unfolding of a world plan, which is so much bigger than any one of us, but so important to be able to share something here that uh, Sister Sharona said, which is so important, so important what she's saying. Um, you know, there's this story, right? Um, it's a very cliched story, but the ending is different on this one. So a whole forest catches fire. The forest and, um, they mm -hmm. use, uh, birds trying to put out the fire and they take a little bit of water birds, and uh, go and put out the fire, you know, mm -hmm. pour it on the forest fire. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. The other animals make fun mm -hmm. of the bird. Whatever I'm doing is just this drop of water in this big forest fire. Eventually, I will be the one who's going to help transform. And we will come in the, in the collective of actually who have done something. And that's an attitude and intention, you know, a, a shift at that level. What mm -hmm. I align myself with. Go ahead, Shireen. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, oh. what I, the version I heard of that story is that the animals laughed and the little bird just was saying, I have to do something and I have to do what I can do. And the dedication and the determination of the little bird caught the attention of the angels who brought the clouds of rain. And those clouds put out the fire. And I like that version because what it's doing is bringing in this other extremely important element in this whole larger picture of transformation that the world is currently in. And that is, you know, not just there is a plan, 
things are not just happening healthy or healthy. <laughs> orchestrating this plan and the part of the one above call it the part of the divine call it the part of god call it the one of the highest intelligence is very real <laughs> in this larger picture of it all and I do feel that's the purpose. One of the main purposes of a good spiritual study is to understand at this point the larger plan, but then who are the players and what are the different the roles? Plan, no, okay, it's in the, you have a role allowed me. And actually, I don't know, Tanya, I don't know if you know, Shireen, for sure, um, you, you wouldn't know, but Manoj Bai does. I found a very short video, which kind of um, uh, investigates um, this aspect that I just brought up. But not having been with you all along, it might have already been covered or, you know, it might have nothing to do with where you're all going already. So no, 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 um, we want to I, see it. I think it's perfect. I think it's very timely. I've actually it. gone through all my questions here and oh, okay. uh, so much appreciate your responses. Absolutely. And I think it's a beautiful thing that this is part of something much bigger than each of us. But if each of us do not step up and decide to get on board, what are we missing? Because the world is going one way, but destiny is going another way. That's right. Um, and again, I, I think you might have covered this, but I think one of our biggest downfalls is that we're continually looking at others to understand what is my contribution, what is the value of my contribution. And we've been raised to think that our contribution or our doing, as in this little bird, is something external. It's a skill I've learned. It's a talent I've cultivated. Not in these times of great extreme. Actually, a very big role that anyone who wants to can play is to be one who's very determined and very focused on connecting to that higher frequency and putting that into the way I'm thinking and speaking and doing because we only need a few people to do this. We don't need everyone doing this. This is a big key. Anyway. You so this might be the moment. That? Yeah, this might be the moment. Can we make this the moment? For the yeah, video. Uh, Manoj Bai or whoever is doing this video, can you just be sure to pause it at that point where I suggested it needs to be paused, not so, stopped, but paused? Yeah, thank you. So, Sister Anu, you can just pause it at 26 seconds just to remind you of that. They're very specific. Is it 20? Yeah, thanks. Is it 26, 20? 26. 26, good. Ah, oh, here we go. Great. Somebody's very ready. <laughs> and there should be sound also. just have to uh, you know in the I oh no Shireen, what are you're you still there okay. <laughs> no, I, yeah I think so that method is everything right like people say practice makes perfect but practice doesn't make perfect you can't just randomly do a practice good practice makes perfect like let's say if you're a golfer or even a cricketer we were talking about cricket earlier you have to have the right batting angle, right mm -hmm. everything. You can't just sit and bat randomly and think, oh, I'm practicing batting. It has to be the right method. Accuracy. So what is the right method? Within the context of um, a spiritual practice or any practice? Spiritual practice and in terms of values and wanting to cultivate our values. Right. Based on the spiritual yeah, truths we receive, the truth. Yeah, it has to be a bit grounded in a spirituality. I'll just share how. <laughs> Tell us what you're thinking. Struck me. Yeah, because what you're saying is absolutely right. Um, so just to add to the pot, it occurs to me that. Um, we misunderstand even a spiritual practice. 
Uh, somebody saying peace and stability is lacking. So what I would like to suggest is that we even could misunderstand a, a spiritual practice because we could be spending a lot of time trying to um, overcome the negative programmings and conditionings. In other words, we're working on the wrong car. We're working on the wrong form. A good spiritual practice should introduce me to my higher self and make my higher self that form of light, the pure spiritual being sitting here, more real than my bodily form. But we're still working on the bodily form where I've developed programmings and conditionings which don't carry my principles and values. We're still trying to remove those. We're still trying to face and confront those instead of putting all our attention and working on our light form, our highest form, our beautiful self. The methodology being based on this, this idea, and we have to prove it to ourselves, that I am, I am, I am very good. No matter how much... <laughs> arrogance, bossiness, uh, disrespecting has become part of my character. That is not how I've been made. And there's a very short limit to how much working on my bossiness and my controlling and all of that will actually help. But this method, focus on the other form, my beauty my truth. Use the whole of your spiritual practice to get to know that <laughs> divine self and love her. Love that truth. Convince yourself, like we were saying before, prove to yourself that that's not just the power of the day, the thing that's going to swing the pendulum, but that that these times are for bringing us back to our divinity and our beauty. There are two short yeah, stories. I think, about sorry, that, I just but, interrupt because I want to make sure we're good for time. I know that we, <laughs> we've probably gone over time, but we, what I really gone. love what you yeah. brought up, and it's so, so important that we're not fighting with not being bad, but we are nurturing that ultimate goodness and light. Beautiful, beautiful. All attention, all attention has to go is there. there. Absolutely. <laughs> at, at least this is my experience at this point. Absolutely. Enough just to identify the wrongness. Ah, oh, that's ego. But then all the stuff on, you know, what is what is behind all of that, the goodness behind it. Yes. So just make sure you're working on the right car. Exactly. The right form. <laughs> and with the right method. And with the right method. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. I, 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 must say, I must say, the higher force, the supreme, the divine is available to us in these times of extremes in ways that that force simply hasn't been before. To explore that, to enter into that uh, wavelength to pull that into my life that's the warmth that's the heat that's the love that's going to melt all that ice it's not just me alone with my idea to be a better person but it's much bigger picture with a much bigger power who's present in order to help me do this that's the right method Wonderful. Thank you. I am going to now hand this back to Anu Ben. I feel you have something to tell us. I, I have. But, well, time is <laughs> finished as we uh, planned, but uh, worth it. As you said, Sister Tanya, that Sister Sharona, thank you for bringing that. You said clean the eyes. I think that's right. I have another thing in my mind, but this is a celebration for four years of cleaning so we'll just make sure from today on that you're cleaning the right path with the right method and cover yourself ice melts but can we cover ourselves with the ice of values all the values 
And why I'm saying that is that it's a celebration today as we celebrate today's occasion. Celebration is not complete without uh, a cake, lighting a cake, then with our seniors for word of thanks. But I think I want to bring this to everyone's notice. Oops. There you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's covered. Uh -huh. It's this uh, drizzling of values. I hope we stay covered. And we light it. What do you think? Uh, the icing of values. Yes, the icing. <laughs> of values. <laughs> How do we get some of that cake? Exactly. Uh, on Zoom. No, no. You, you will be offered uh, on Zoom. <laughs> I'll cut it and bring it to you. No? <laughs> and while we eat, we'll think of you. And that's how you get that mm, yummy flavor of the cake. And everyone who is here. It's celebrating each one of us. Let's open our video. Let's feel the light as I light. I leave the light of this candle that let the light of values be lit in your life forever. And uh, can we do that now? While in presence of definitely Sister Claudia and uh, Dr. Mehta. And of course, Brother Manoj, and as you know, the big team behind and all the participants, it's a congratulations to all of you. Can we bring the light? <clears throat> light. In the silence, but with the music of all the values what's playing in your heart. Let's make a wish. Light of values beautify our life every moment. Okay, so we'll try to cut the cake. Let's see if it reaches to you. Can we do that? Here is a knife. Ready? Oh, okay. Values or Om Shanti. That deeper music in your heart. <laughs> Did that. Uh -huh. Here is the beautiful cake. Wow. <laughs> I think I did taste it. Yeah, it's good. Very good. Very sweet celebration. Congratulations yeah, to everyone. The to the with hand, but let this light and the sweetness of values be on. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. What is next, Sister Ramesh? So thank you so much. Oh, yeah, we are having people's backgrounds also changing. Suddenly, Sister Sharona is in a different world. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So if I can just request our seniors, we have Dr. Ashok Mehta and Sister Claudia. So first, Dr. Mehta, to propose the vote of thanks. I don't know, ben, whenever I, I know her for more than 30 years, the first time I met her in Boston, she was teaching in the university English. And next time I met her in Tel Aviv. And I'm just, uh, I would have loved to hear from her. How do you practice values during these difficult times which you're facing? You know, it's, we are far away from it. But if we have to be in your situation, how would we send a good wishes and how would we remain peaceful and happy? That would be it. We are going through a tough time. Of course, you are in Madhuban at the moment, but presuming that you were in Tel Aviv at this point of time, I would have loved to hear how would you 
faced the challenge in a spiritual way. Of course, I, a I don't know if there's time for that. Uh, I very much appreciate the the care and the love behind that kind of question, but I need to know from Tanya if there's time for a response, and if so, how much time? <laughs> Uh, I, I would need to know from others. <laughs> yeah, so let me tell you, we can go on till 9.30 India time. Please don't worry. As it uh, is, we have workshops for two hours always. So don't worry. 9.30 yeah, PM is Actually, fine. that was one of the questions that, yeah, unfortunately, were not with us. But, you know, in terms of Shireen Ben in Florida and facing that kind of extreme circumstances. But I also had the question as well, thinking of you both uh, and you in Tel Aviv in a situation that is also actually unimaginable for many of us. So it would be lovely to hear your sharing. So it's just to say that um, Pretty much what I've shared up to now is in the kind of thought process that we are putting ourselves through. We of the Brahma Kumaris in Israel, and I'm sure people around the planet who are in these conditions of war um, and other very dramatic, um, uncontrollable circumstances. Um the larger picture is extremely important and you have to keep applying it. And if the practice of gratitude and appreciation has ever held importance for you, and I recommend it as a practice, there's never a situation in which it's more important than such circumstances. I'm very grateful and I appreciate very much this chance to practice stable, uh, keeping myself stable in a peaceful thought and feeling about what's going on. It's a very important practice not to be influenced by the violence and to know myself as a non-violent person and to prove and to continue with that proof that non-violence is the truth. And now is the time for that pendulum to swing. Let me be someone contributing to that swing. So it happens sooner rather than later. So it's making myself responsible, not just for my own well-being, but you know, take on the larger plan. There are huge benefits in that. And um, that's where I, 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 because I, according to the philosophy of the Brahma Kumaris, uh, God is a major player in this larger plan. And um, I, I feel it's a great, great privilege and great honor to be able to play my part alongside of the divine God. And uh, yet the practice becomes extremely strict. Not one thought out of faith, trust, peace, personal well-being, personal accountability to well-being, it's a very important test paper. It's a very important opportunity to practice and rehearse. And that's what we do. We help each other keep this framework around everything that's going on. When we hear the sirens for the bombs, we translate that uh, into traffic control music. And we just, <laughs> for those who know of our Brahma Kumari's practice, so once an hour music goes off and we go into that frequency of peace and divinity. So we hear the sirens for bomb warnings, and that's our music to go into a higher stage. And you can see also in the bomb shelters, people hide their emotions.
back in, in a hard kind of way. A Brahmin by Since fear can change, and you know that that's that's the divine. You're happy if you could be an instrument for that. Either area isn't yet proving that to you. Uh, Look around proof, and uh, your area will also <laughs> have that chance uh, soon in the upcoming yeah. future because we really are in there is responsibility, and we can do this. Thank you, Sharona. That's a very inspiring and important message that basically we all, if we're not already ready or already in that experience, that uh, it's definitely where we're all headed. Thank you so much. By the way, that's why I changed my background. Absolutely. Beauty. I liked the beauty part. That's also something that is a focus it's for me the as right well. Car. <laughs> and the right car. Maybe we can go back to uh, Dr. Metabai if you want to, to share a few other thoughts. I always looked at Serena and whenever I look, look at her, I'm always re reminded of Mother Teresa. I, I saw it with her once before. She has the same structure and similar approach. So I really enjoyed uh, listening to you. I think uh, if there's any place where the practice of spirituality should be uh, done in a right way in which we have been practicing and learning is the right place where you are. That's the toughest and I think that's, Baba would say that this is an examination. You have to pass the paper and then you get the marks. So there you are. On you all are sides. A... On all sides. Yeah. Israel, Gaza, Middle East, yeah. Ukraine, so many places yeah. all around the, the globe. Any, any place is as good or as bad or as tough. But amazing uh, that... Uh, you have been able to keep your balance so well and keep so happy. I'm so happy to see that. I haven't seen you for a long time. Missed sure. meeting. I nice should have been in Madhuban at this time of the year, but I have some commitments in Mumbai, so I couldn't come. I missed meeting all of you. Thank you. I think I have not met Tanya Ben and Shirin Ben. So I, I have been to Montreal, but that was many years back. Many I don't think back. I was even here yet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tanya Ben, uh, uh, the Syrian Ben I missed because I have been uh, to Florida a couple of times, but to Miami, but didn't have a chance. But thank you for sharing your thoughts. And I think we are learning every day, even after many, many years from each other. I think these values workshops have given an opportunity of dipping into your deeper experiences. Thank you very much for sharing. We enjoyed it. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. It was very nice to hear from Dr. Mehta and also asking uh, Sharona to give us some real points about her life right now. And because we have been studying those values, I always say that we we study and sometimes we see one value needs to be increased. It's nice to go back from the seniors, what we need to do to improve. And of course, that like Sharina was saying, that we need to go deep into that soul conscious. So all those things comes together. So when we come to the situation like she has, 
Other has different situation. We all have our situation. Sometimes a war outside, sometimes a war inside. And some situations are different, but still at the end, we have to bring the values update and make sure that we are using them so we can go to those situations. So it's a very, it was a pleasure to have all those values and a fortune, I think, to hear from different ones. And even today here, Tanya asked those questions and both sisters answer those questions. And like she said, we have to know the method. We know how to do the method. And then we have to practice, practice, practice. So when the time comes, like Sharon is going through now, and Shireen comes sometime. I went through flood too. I know what is it is. And you see the rivers is coming and taking over their house. So then we know what how the things comes and how we react that moment. That moment is just whatever is inside ourselves that reacts. And so that's why we have to practice for those time. Like always we say, they, 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 we have to practice if a fire comes, what to do. Now we are practicing here for earthquake, so we know what to have to do. So then same way, so the practice of the values also have to be know the method and then a practice was very good, very good to hear this today. Re remind us, hey, know the method and practice every day. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. And also so thank, thank you. you. Translators as well, and those who record the videos so that we can hear it again and again. So thank you so much, Dr. Mahita and Sister Claudia. And just a quick announcement. Uh, you will be wondering where Sister Shireen has disappeared. So she just had to leave for some other uh, commitment. So she apologized for that. But we had her for the entire session otherwise. So once so on, uh, I'll just pass it on to Sister Anuna. Over to you for the announcements and the photographs. Yes, so uh, quickly, let's uh, see what's coming up. We are full, right? Full with our values. The prosperity is the time now, as they also celebrate in India, the sign of prosperity, Diwali. So the value that we'll discuss for episode 101, 101 for Values for Life series next episode is prosperity. In Hindi, it's Samriddhi. So it's happening next Saturday, 26th October, same time. We'll have our very dear um, senior brother, Brother Ken from um, Brazil. I don't know if he's traveling and joining from other one too. But he is the regional coordinator of Brahma Kumaris in Latin America. So please uh, take a note, make a note and please join. And then following would be the workshop that we take uh, more time to deepen the value within us through exercises. So it is happening two weeks after, 2nd November, same time. Uh, first hour will be the exercises. Second hour will be the inside and meditation. We'll have Sister Anjani and Sister Rona joining from Brahma Kumaris, Manhattan, New York, USA. Please uh, join us then. And followingly, just after 12 hours for, of that workshop, we'll have the silence retreat on prosperity. This is based on the Brahma Kumaris teachings. It's well open to everybody, whoever is practicing Brahma Kumaris teachings or not, because it's silence and deeper reflection. So we welcome you to join and experience. And you can find us on our websites, uh, vihasa.in and vancouver.brahmakumaris.ca. All the videos, including today's, will be on our YouTube channels as well as these playlists. So we'll see you in the next ones. But right now we'll have uh, our photo. I would request everybody to open your photo, see your right form, and shine, shine your light so that we can make this moment the most memorable. and make our lives shining with value. Okay, I got the photo. Thank you, everyone. I would also now request, uh, will request all the team members, whoever are here to open your video as we will spotlight you. Actually, participants to whoever want will have their video open, will flow the light to spotlighting with the last meditation song. So, I'll welcome, invite everybody to open your video. Thank you. 
much. And now is the last meditation uh, of the session. Brother Nikhil will.
Thank you once again to the participants, the translators, the recorders, each one of you, and also our dear speakers. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. See you soon. Keep shining with values. Let's keep shining.